G'day, this is Scotty Tucker. In this video, I'm talking with Bob Lusk, pond expert guru from the US, my good mate and mentor, and Jarrett Garrett, a, a really good earth moving guy. And we went down to a, uh, a brand new pond that's being dug uh, about halfway between Dallas and Houston. And these guys, the reason why I wanted to shoot this video is because it's talking about structure and fish habitat, something that I don't think we do very well yet in Australia. Hey, Bob Lusk with Pond Boss. Jarrett Garrett with Garrett Excavation Services. We're working on a lake south of Dallas, Texas. Jarrett's the contractor. I'm kind of the consultant to talk about the things we're doing. The landowner's around the corner here and the mission was to create a really fun bass bluegill fishing lake where we can grow some big pan fish and some sport fish to go along with it. Largemouth bass in this part of the planet. So Jarrett, you've come in here and cleared the site. You've done a massive amount of dirt work in a pretty short order. Yes sir. You know, and so now part of what I've talked about is how to create a habitat plan. So now you're implementing that habitat plan. What are some of the things that you've done? Show us. Well, so first of all, Bob, we, we got this pond down to depth and then we started getting these shallow areas. Once we had this water, figure out the water, where the water envelope was going to be on the shoreline and we excavated down uh, to depth where you wanted us to dig, uh, basically creating levels of, of elevation underneath the water. And then we also, we built tic-tac-toe structures for habitat and we also hauled in some concrete. We basically took the logs, the trees, and we cut the trunks of the trees and uh, equal lengths. Uh, then we took them and basically made a tic-tac-toe structure. Once we placed the big trees down parallel three to one another, we set two on top of those crossways and then so forth and so on. To log those things down, to tie them down where they won't float, we used uh, nails, 16 penny nails, and uh, baling wire, wire, or it's like a tie wire, and wired them all together. By doing that, we haven't had any structures float before. The last one that we built was perfectly fine; it's not floating. Uh, some some log, some wood floats, and some don't. <laughs> so it's just really weird. But you could also take uh, some some stakes, and you could drive those stakes down crossways and and tie the steel, you know, with chain or whatever you want to use. The other. The other habitat is came from the Teague uh, City Hospital that we demoed last month. That was actually part of the slab that we had left over, so we just hauled it out here and put it in here for habitat. Yes, sir. Uh, as you can see, we have the uh, spawning beds down there. We, uh, we basically cut a trough in at uh, uh, three foot elevation down to six foot elevation in certain areas, and we put the geotech. It's a nylon fabric that's woven together about six mils thick and we roll that fabric out and that keeps the uh, the grass or the underwater vegetation coming through uh, over a period of time then we put the pea gravel so those bluegill they like to spawn in, in that stuff there uh, over here you'll see that we got different elevations here that's for the the to change the temperature and the weather so these fish from what Bob's saying is they'll they'll habitat at different elevations in the pond so we give them that option. And over here is where our pier is going to be. Uh, we're going to build a pier out here for the customer and the spawning bed will actually be underneath the pier. So they'll be protected. Yeah, I agree with that. So that's Tommy Jarrett, would you ever use car tires as structure? Well, they're paraffinatum and you know, they're, they're made out of rubber. So uh, I, I don't think I would use tires. I wouldn't recommend that, but some people do, you know. Uh, it takes a while for them to break down, but they do eventually break down. Then you have that sheen on, in the water. So I wouldn't recommend using anything. I would use something that was man-made or concrete, something that came from the earth. So here's the way this looks. There was gonna be quite a bit of shallow water in this lake. Shallow water is our enemy. It fills up with vegetation, then we're having to combat that. And it gets, it becomes noxious and gets in the way of fishing and there's too much of it. So what Jarrett did, we talked about it, and he came in and you could see right here, he stair-stepped it going down. Now, the goal is, is to have a three to one slope to get down as deep as three feet as fast as possible, and then build some shelves for spawning beds for some of these fish. And then take that next layer down to six or seven feet with a three to one slope, so we can eliminate the shallow water and make it productive for the fishery. So that's where we are. Now, it's time to come in and enhance the rest of the lake when he's talking about the canopies off the trees, we're trying to create the right kind of habitat for all the different sizes of the different species of fish so they can have what they need to be able to thrive in this lake. 